hi everybody my name is set k bunny in today's video i want to show you the 10 mistakes to avoid when using photoshop now i made these mistakes earlier on when i was becoming a graphic designer and i don't want you to go through the same thing so let's jump into photoshop and then let me show you what to avoid now the first mistake i want you to avoid is not using layers you can locate layers at the right side of the photoshop interface and this is the layers all over this place you can see them here a lot okay so you can see everything on this side each one of them every one of them over here now this helps us to easily track and edit any layer that we want to just say my client wants me to go back and then add an s to it or maybe perhaps my client feels like it's not an a that should be here it's an o i could easily go and look for it and then just add it to it over there let's just find it right now and then if the client wants an o over here i could easily tap an o over there because it's on a different layer and I, I could easily track it so the second mistake i want to share with you is not learning shortcuts shortcuts save you a lot of time and shortcuts make things quite simple for you now as a graphic designer and somebody who does a lot of photo retouching shortcuts is something that we use often so we have a picture like this okay first thing you would do is ctrl j to duplicate it now i could do it like that or i could just right click here and go and look for duplicate layer and just rename it or something like that and it's going to do the same thing for me but then it's a long process right click it go for duplicate layer maybe i have to search for it or find it wherever it is let's see whether we can find it duplicate layer and then it's a whole lot of process for me so ctrl j duplicates control just duplicates now this comes in handy a lot and so what i like most of my students to do is they have to write down certain shortcuts and they have to memorize it and this will save you a lot of time now say you are somebody who wants to do a lot of photo retouching one of the things we do when we are photo retouching is gaussian blur especially when you want to use the frequency separation method okay so control j to duplicate it duplicate it again and then i hide this now the one underneath it i would like to work on it so i'll mute this one as well i would like to blur this one now to get the gaussian blur effect i'll have to go to filter then i'll have to go to blur then i'll have to go to gaussian blur okay now that's a long process i could easily use ctrl b to do that and get the same gaussian blur that i want to have okay so you can see work with it but how do you set your shortcuts that's another question we go to edit and then we scroll down until we find short keyboard shortcuts over here and click on it then we can go and set the shortcuts on any window we want so let's just say we want a shortcut on gaussian blur we go to filter and then we scroll and go and look for blur blur this is blur all right or this is blur and we can scroll down and look for gaussian blur now you can see gaussian blur is over here just click on it Control b to indicate ctrl g it will work on it ctrl b and then it just comes there like that and then i click on accept and then it fixes it for us so we don't have to be repeating the exact same long process over and over again now guys shortcuts will come in handy even the tools over here we use shortcuts for them i don't click on let me right click it for you to see you can see we have v over here that means the move tool you can use v for it and then the brush tool over here is b you can use b for it shortcut for it and then the pen tool you can use p for it you can see so i could easily just be watching here i could easily use v for the move tool b for the brush tool p for the pen tool and this helps you to work smoothly without any interruption and it saves you a lot of time and so guys these are some of the things i want you to also start incorporating into your design if you're somebody who doesn't use shortcuts a lot chances are you are spending a lot of time editing and so guys this is another mistake i want you to avoid the third mistake i want you to avoid is applying adjustment layers now i can't re-emphasize this enough applying adjustment layers and let me duplicate this and then let me mute this okay, now i do this often i like to keep the original document down so that when i mess with this I could easily come back and get my source file again so this this is it and then we go to image we go to adjustments and then we can find all sort of adjustments over here now you can click on level and then it pops up and then we work on it 
and then we work on it and then we click on ok and then we go back to image we go to adjustments and then we click on posterize and then we set it like this and we click on it and then we go back to it again and then we go to auto contrast and then we work on, and then we are like we, we want to go back you know we want to go back we want to just re-edit the first adjustment we made you know and we cannot do that why because we applied all the adjustments to it i used to do that but i stopped very early in my career it helped me a lot especially when the client says that i feel like the face is too white i want you to just get rid of it for me and you could easily tweak it because you are using a non-destructive method and you can see these adjustments apply straight to it it applies straight to it let me delete this and then let me duplicate this again and then let me mute this you're going to use this this time now what i like to use is i go to this side for my adjustments and then if i want to apply exposure i could click on it and then i could apply it a little bit and then leave it there and then i could go back again and i could apply hue and saturation and then just boost the saturation a little bit and then close it and then still go for yet another one again perhaps i want to add a curve to it and then just drag it a little bit there then maybe i just want to add black and white to it again guys this is it and then the client says that please i don't want it black and white i want it colored then maybe i could still go back to it and just hide the black and white for the colors to come if the client says that the colors are too popping they are too much and too saturated i could go and hide the hue and saturation as well and then even the curves i could work on it as well maybe the client says that it's too exposed i could mute it as well so you could see how it's done because they are all adjustment layers and so i prefer to work with adjustment layers than to work with these adjustments over here now this is also going to save you a lot of time avoid these particular ones okay now these adjustments also come with mask it means that even though you have applied it you can still apply it on just a specific areas and so you could click on your brush and then just go and make sure it doesn't affect the rest of the body you can see it's not affecting on the rest of the body it's only affecting that side the rest of the body is not affecting and that's the beauty about adjustment layers the fourth mistake to avoid is working continuously without taking a break and i say this from experience uh, many a times when we are behind the computer and we are working we don't actually see the real thing over there there are, there are times that i work and the work or the artwork or the project doesn't really look professional but then i have added too much things to it it looks really bad now what i learned to do over the years is after i'm done with the work i save it and i close the laptop and i just i just take a stroll take a one hour break when i come back and i really look at the artwork I now begin to see certain mistakes now this is something that you also need to add to your your tools you need to be able to close your artwork and just step out just don't be quick to send it to the client many a times there are mistakes that you will make or there are certain things that you have done that you feel like you should have toned it down a little bit now this is very vital for graphic designers we have to learn to take a break come back and we look at our artwork with a fresh eyes and a very new look and then be able to generate new ideas and find out ways and means to even make it much more better and things to add to it things to take out of it as well now point number f is not using smart objects you can see it over here i could go here to my filter and then i could easily apply uh, any any of it let's apply blur and then let's apply caution blur to it and then click over here now you can see it's applied to it but then because it's not a smart object the effect we apply has been ingrained in the picture and it's difficult or it's impossible to re-edit it once you end up doing a lot of work and your work becomes quite complex and you have a lot of layers over here it becomes difficult to go back and then fix this particular error so i like to work with smart objects i'll right click it and then click on convert to smart object now that way when i go back to filter and i go to blur and i go to gaussian blur and i click on it and i apply it to it and i feel like it's too much you can see it's applied it to it over here i could easily double click on gaussian blur and tone it down again way into my work maybe 
three hours into my work i could easily go back down there into the layers and still retweak it and still make it work for me and so smart objects helps you to change the settings of your effect at any time and at any moment even when you are hours into your design another mistake to avoid when using photoshop is not naming and not organizing your files now photoshop can really be a complex tool but it's also quite easy and when you are creating your work you could find out that it's a lot more complicated especially when you look at the layers you can see all these things it's difficult to really find what you want and if you want to just hide the prophetic conference over here let me control h to hide it prophetic conference this is one of the works i did for a client some time ago it's very difficult for you to hide especially you have to look through everywhere just to see whether you can actually find what you are looking for okay now this is really a complex a complex layer over here we are looking at now to really help you out find what you want easily to, to really do that for you and save you a lot of time it becomes necessary for us to group our layers and organize our files as well and so as you can see here i put noise adjustments letting everybody know anybody that picks my work to understand that this is the noise adjustment i added to it and then i also put the names over here so that all the names are actually in this folder anybody who wants to work on the names can easily go into the names group and then find each of their names in the three speakers here their names are here neatly grouped anybody that picks your work will really understand your 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 flow your workflow and then it will also save you a lot of time when you are looking for a particular layer to edit the seventh mistake i want you to avoid is not saving your master files with the layers it's really going to affect your career one way or the other when a graphic designer he does a project like this what we have is all these layers and then i go to file and then i go to save as and then i save it wherever i want to save it i save it there and then i save it with all the layers all right so i asked to send me a document and they send me this something like this with no layers so i was a little bit alarmed asking for the ones with the each layer in place and it says no that one is already deleted okay now in my mind i'm like what if the the client wants you to you know re-edit some stuff you know it becomes quite difficult and so as a graphic designer i'll tell you not to do that no matter what advice you don't do this when you need to go back and re-edit your work you want all your layers to be back where they are you want all your layers to be back there and you want to go back there and then dig in and then we correct everything you need to do and send them back to your client again now we have other graphic designers who charge just for storing your stuff for you and so when a client comes and says that the label you designed for me three years ago do you still have it you say yes i says i want you to send it to me still charge for the exact same price that you charged the person you know previously just for keeping it for them and so this is another way of making money as a graphic designer save your stuff even if you have to save it on a google drive or you have to save it on a hard disk do that but save it with all the layers in there save the master file as a psd file with all the layers in there now the eighth mistake i want you to also avoid when using photoshop is forgetting to save now when you are designing you should always click on ctrl s to save click on ctrl s to save and if you feel like you cannot do that often you just have to let's just open this one you just have to go to edit scroll down to preference and then let's go to so you can see file handling we have automatically save recovery information every every i save it to 10 minutes you could save it to five minutes okay but between five and ten you should be able to choose one now this way when the light goes out one hour later at least you know that um you know you just lost 10 minutes of work you didn't lose the entire work now if you aren't ticket you are you are it's a dangerous thing to do just keep it on there keep it five minutes or ten minutes that way when you lose your document you are sure that you are going to get everything before 10 minutes ago now, another mistake to avoid when you are using photoshop is not customizing your interface 
or not customizing your workspace okay let's go here let's go to um which one should we go to let's go to reset essential okay now this is what i normally have okay and interesting enough i also have some other ones as well i have all these here and they are all there and i have character i have i have histogram i have information i have all these all these there i have and let me bring it back there okay if it's cumbersome now this is the rule that i always use if i am not using it often i like to take it out of the interface i don't want to see it i don't want to view it i want what i use often to be staring at me most of the time and so what i do is that i just history i use history not often do this i don't use it often i'll close it i don't use navigation or whatever this is i close it i don't use this i don't use property what is this i don't use it i use this one i don't use this i don't use this as well okay so i'll drag properties all the way here and then i would get rid of this close tab so i have it big like this uh, so normally this is how i work i customize my interface now i advise you also do the same thing what you use often keep it there what you don't use it often just hide it those panels hide them if you're not using any tool hide them and then just customize it to fit your own need and when you need to reset everything just go back to windows and then you go back here and then you click on reset and if you also want to save it you could easily save it by clicking on new workspace and then type set and then click on save um keyboard shortcut menus tools by everything i click on save that way and when i go to windows and i go to workspace and i go to reset essentials and i have all these stuff i could easily go back and click on workspace and then go and click on set and then i have what i normally have over here and so this is also another way to do it now guys the final thing i want you to avoid in photoshop is let me drag this into photoshop and then let me release it i find many people when they want to clean an area they go and then they pick the eraser tool and then they click on it or click on it and then you know okay and then they just brush on it increase the size a little bit if they want to and then click on it okay click on it like that and then they, they just clean it now even though eraser tool works for many people as a graphic designer i feel like you should learn how to use a different way which is non-destructive because this when you go back you have a limited number to go back now what if you exhaust all those numbers and then you are still not able to clean or go back to where you really want to be so the alternative to uh, the eraser tool is simply masking and masking can be found over here i click on it and then i come and pick my brush tool and then i set here to color black let me close this set here to color black and then go and pick a hard round brush set the hardness to 100 percent make sure the opacity and the flow are both 100 100 here click on the mask and then reduce the size of the brush a little bit you could do that by clicking on the size over here or by dragging it over there you could also use the the bracket keys over here as well now once you have it like this and you click on the mask here you could easily clean it again and then when you are way into your work three hours after when you know going back using the history brush will not really solve the issue you can easily pick your brush to set here to color white come back to it click on it and just paint it back in again or brush it back in again and so it's really non-destructive i would advise you don't use the eraser tool even though you have the eraser tool over here seldom use it use it maybe when it becomes so much necessary for you to use it but the alternative to the eraser tool is 100 percent the masking now guys if you love this video please hit the bell icon and subscribe to this channel i hope you learned something new if you are not using these tips already you start using them to save more time and also to avoid certain frustrations you'll be facing later on in your design I love you all guys bye